How's it going, everybody? This is on Ava Technologies. This stock just went public today. It's on 4D LiDAR, four dimensional LiDAR. It's very awesome. It's, it looks to be a good long term play. This is not financial advice, and do your own due diligence. But this is a stock that you may be interested in. It's one I like a lot. So I'm going to let you see some videos and then we'll talk. Check this out. Uh, actually, and then today, uh, it started out at like, well, it was previously running at 10 on a SPAC, and it was 13, and then it's already up at 16 bucks. So, it looks to be, I mean, it's not a big profit right now, but the future has a lot of benefits. So, here we go. I'm going to show you some videos, and we'll go from there. Uh, big day down at the New York Stock Exchange for LiDAR maker Avo. It was founded by two former Apple executives. The company debuts on public markets after combining with SPAC Interprivate Acquisition Corp. Joining us for a first on Yahoo Finance is Ava Chairman, co-founder and CTO Mina Rezik. Mina, good to see you and congratulations on the listing here. Uh, so we talked to you a couple, uh, the team a couple of months ago when uh, the SPAC was uh, getting up and running. Where are you at just in terms of production of your product? Well, we have been uh, very focused on our development of our uh, uh, technology. Um, as you probably know, we have signed uh, one of our, um, another partner, uh, probably since we talked last time, uh, Denso, which is a tier one manufacturer. We've been working with them towards uh, uh, production uh, for um, the mass market. Uh, this is um, one of the, the second biggest tier one uh, manufacturers for uh, in the world and this is um, I believe their um, only LiDAR uh, partnership that is currently to date and this is a, a big testament from them towards the 4D LiDAR and what it is capable for and really being an end state here. So it will take some time you know that the investor presentation uh, production will start in 2023 if I'm correct you know, how do you keep investors just enticed and, and invested in this story just given the long timeline until you start making your products yeah exactly this is this part of being in the automotive business is that it's a long sales cycles it takes quite a long time to really develop this technology and and really uh, go through all kind of testing to uh, mature it and really bring it to the automotive space um, obviously gonna uh, a lot of the Oh, um, uh, keeping up with the shareholders really is going to be about the advances in the technology and the traction we're going to be getting such as bringing Denso on board we also brought uh, Too Simple as well um, all of this is really what uh, we're going to be looking for in the next two to three years till we really go to production in 2023-2024 timeline now, I mean, you guys have, uh, you know, a longer lead time, but certainly um, the market has been abuzz with uh, concerns over shortages in the chip space um, and, and supply constraints mm -hmm. there. I'm curious if that has impacted um, your development at all or, or, or how you guys have thought about maybe mitigating some of these issues, you know, if we are five, six, down, five, six years down the line and, you know, a similar type cycle, um, you know, supply crunch comes in. Yeah, I mean, supply chain is, is one of our... Um key areas we really invest in and focus on we have been locking the supply chains as uh, as uh, as we uh, as we develop the technology we are um, growing our supply chain team this is obviously an area that we are um, keeping an eye on we're very focused on obviously it does obviously it does not really impact us right now because we're not in production but as we talk to our all our foundries all our um, uh, supply chain we have to make sure that we lock our supply chains for the for the future and this is something that we are very focused on do you uh, you know part of your presentation you call out three billion potentially in adjusted EBITDA by 2030 is there concerns that uh, projections like this they're they're just too robust or do you have any concern about meeting those projections well the, the automotive market and the, the space, uh, the time that we are going after, is expected to be over 200 billion in this time frame. So 
it is based on our, what we also feel in the market, what we hear from all the suppliers and the OEMs in the market by 2030. This is really where, what we expect the, the autonomous cars and the level, level 4 cars is going to be huge. That is on top of the fact that we are also entering the consumer market and we believe that um, LiDAR would be one of the critical sensors when it comes to consumer products, especially um, LiDAR uh, facing for mobile applications or tablets. Uh, this all adds up to the TAM that we're going after and it's um, based on all the information we have now, this is a, a good uh, indication of where we're going to be. You know, and, and Mina, it occurs to me as we're, as we're talking, um, you know, because, you know, myself and Brian, we've talked to Sarouche previously, and uh, maybe I'm just, maybe we should take a step back and for our viewers who are familiar sort of with what Ava is working at and, and sort of where LiDAR also sits in the future of, of cars. Maybe we could talk about that just for a second and the different approach that, you know, LiDAR is taking, you guys are taking versus um, other self-driving, you know, approaches and, and how you see the, um, you know, you call this maybe an end state technology, how you see the space maturing over the next decade. Yeah, so LiDAR, LiDAR effective, uh, AVA effectively is developing what we call 4D LiDAR. This is effectively where the first company that brings the fourth dimension to the LiDAR space, and that is the velocity dimension. This is, uh, we are able to do this while integrating the whole LiDAR on a chip uh, based on silicon photonics technology. This is something that has not been done before. We are the first to do this. Uh, so far, we have been working with an amazing talent of um, uh, a team. We have signed some of the best uh, customers out there. We, uh, one of our investors, for example, is Porsche AC, which is the main backer for VW. We have uh, customers such as Denso, uh, Tier 1, and ZF as another Tier 1. We also have um, Too Simple, uh, a leading truck self-driving car um, uh, technology company. You know, Mina, you and uh, Sarush, you you were Apple. You were working at Apple. Uh, you were Apple executives. What did you What have you learned? What did you learn in Apple that you're going to apply to this company? Really, it's um, a lot of things. Uh, frankly, we have learned at Apple. But one of the things that is very important for us is that the attention to the details and just taking a, an ability to ship a product. And this is not something easy, especially in the hardware business. It's the ability to be able to take an idea all the way to a product and able to ship it and the attention of the details to make sure it's done right i would say this is probably one of the most um unique things that i've learned at apple that have helped me quite a bit as well as through as well through this journey at ava okay now we're going to look at uh another video here one second And I read in, in depth about what you're doing. Why would anyone? The other guys are just inferior. They don't have that fourth dimension. So what car company in its right mind would use the cheaper? Well, I don't even know. You can tell me whether you can make this thing at scale. It'll probably end up being cheaper. But what car company? I mean, you've got the biggest car company in the world involved with you. You've got a major manufacturer uh, that does parts for companies involved with you. Why would any? What's the? Give me the case for the other guy, if you can, because I can't think of it. I, I've seen it and I've been in it, and I don't want to go back in it. <laughs> so, look, the, the reality is. Our technology is on the way to development and coming into production by 2024 timeframe. We see now in, in the interim, you know, stopgap programs where you have kind of pilot programs, not super high volumes or scale, where three LiDAR actually is in play. But with, you know, all the OEMs and, and the customers that we engage with, it's becoming more and more clear that that end state, the future of, of perception and LiDAR sensing is really moving from that 3D towards that 4D. And we, you know, we have always believed that, and, and, it, and you know, we're seeing more and more of that realization now in the industry. And, and that's that's something that I think we're going to start seeing more and more as we approach also that 24, 25 time frame where our technology is going to ramp up into, into more. Right. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter, Mad Twelve Two, or, or give us a call. Okay, so now that you've seen that that tells you what's going on this thing but we want to talk about crypto because we'll be the number one lidar company 
once it comes out. So I will keep an eye on this. It looks good. Okay, so it looks good. So let's talk about some other things about it. Uh, this back came out today. Um, you're talking about the pricing. It started out $13, and now it's looking around $16. It has executives that have uh, some experience from Waymo and Apple and other executives on there. Uh, projected income, uh, projected growth. It won't bring in money till uh, 2025. It's going to break even around 20, well, 2023 is going to start generating money. So you're talking, you only have uh, Lumina, which is producing money basically uh, this year, except the technology on this is way better because it has four dimensional technology. And what's really important is that not only does it have that, but it is able to work with uh, inclement weather and through like the sunlight reflections and things like that. It's also w moving toward another phase of uh, vibrational um, detection as well so and it also has applications for security uh, smart devices computers and other aspects um, regarding the 4d what else you want to know is that um, on like well every level it's beats competition the only thing is you're gonna have to put in this as a long-term play and make it through this year so what's gonna happen this year hopefully they'll have enough information out during this year as in new contracts and things like that and updated things and that will keep the investors into the game enough to keep the stock price good so tomorrow uh, when Jerome Powell speaks He's going to talk about um, the uh, not doing anything for the economy, and the ten-year ten-year bond might go up and then cause the stock market to crash a little bit. But since it's a new stock, it may be okay. So I want to check one thing for you. Um, we're going to see A V E A. If they have a lot of information on the website, it doesn't really show that they have a, anything coming up soon. But I mean, it's almost worth it because of all the all the aftermarket uses as well. Industrial security. Um, it gets through inclement weather, other weather reflectivity, and things that the other ones don't. I guess if you get it. You would just have to be careful about um, how much you want to put into it right now, and then if uh, the things drop, see if it's the type of stock. Well, since it's not a complete value stock and it really has no income, they kind of tend to go down a bit when the stock market drops a bit. But this is such a hot commodity right now; it'd probably be okay. And the only thing similar to this one is. Uh, you know CCIV and that's actually dropped but it's everything's coming back so just like that and by nano genomics I mean it's a drop but it's coming back as well so if you want to buy it and hang on to it I mean it's pretty high technology uh, if you want to look at the competition uh, look at light uh, luminar it's like at 30 bucks it's twice the price as this uh, Intel just picked up one um, that they bought out so they're at 60 but the only one that's really at market right now is uh, Luminar so if you want to get in on a good level right now it's 16 bucks and just ride it out it's gonna be better than all the rest of them and with the technology this thing has it's gonna definitely be number one so I would have you look into that do your own due diligence this is not financial advice and make sure you check this out see what you think and then get into it on a good position it looks like it's a good price right now because it's beginning so you might be interested in it now if you like to get corporate credit personal funding credit repair or anything on the financial realm give me a call at 312-473-4163 thanks